All right, and welcome to this uh, kind of video lesson on how to prepare and answer an essay in about 40 minutes' time. I'll try to go by a little quicker if I can, um, but hopefully having this resource allows you to think about how you break down your question and how you go back into the stories in the booklet for more information. So I've gone ahead and written down a question from a level two exam, which is analyze how symbolism was used to develop the key idea in the text. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and just underline or bold my keywords here. I'm going to highlight them. All right, so obviously symbolism is one. Key ID in the text. And I'm going to be analyzing. So we'll be breaking it down. All right, now that I've gone ahead and done that, I need to kind of just map this out for myself. So key idea. Well, before I do that, what text am I going to do? I think I'm going to look at the red bow. And the key idea I want to look at in the red bow is manipulation. So I think about what symbols do I have in the red bow. This is where I go back into my text. Symbols. All right. So I've got both the the bow itself and the rabbit dogs. So it's both Emily and the one Uncle Matt produces. So I just keep in mind I need to do an introduction. In my introduction, I need to answer the question. And I'm going to have my body paragraphs. I'm going to have my first paragraph that looks at the key idea of manipulation. And then in the following two paragraphs, I'm going to say I have the red bow. Symbol of manipulation. And then we talk about how the rabbit dogs are symbol of manipulation. Uh, and again, the reason I'm doing this is just um, obviously just to kind of provide a plan for myself. So it's something I can look back through as I go over and over the text. And finally, my conclusion. I want to restate the answer to my question as well and make the links the connections between the symbols. All right. So I've gone ahead and done all my planning. That hasn't taken me too long at all. Next step is to basically answer that question and then start drafting. So I'm going to do an answer based on the information I've collected. Um, manipulation is a key idea developed in George Saunders' short story. Just like that. There is the answer to my question. Now I can actually start drafting my introduction. Ultimately, 
The answer itself could be your introduction, but if you want to follow a more traditional structure, let me go back towards the end of our short story guide, you'll see you want to probably introduce the author and text, provide a brief summary, and then provide that answer. So I could start by saying, here I go with a short story written in 2009 by an American author, George Saunders. The story is about a family going to terms with the death of their young daughter to a pack of both rapid dogs. And now I just go ahead and write my answer on my inflation of the key idea developed in George Sanders' short story. Like that, we have our introduction complete. Right, now that my introduction is finished, I need to develop my first body paragraph. And that first body paragraph should be on the main subject of the essay. And in this case, it's usually at the very end of the question. So it's the key idea. And I've chosen the key idea of manipulation. So for my body paragraph, I'm simply going to start by stating what the key idea is. The key idea in the repo is manipulation. Now I know that seems very simple, but having that clear topic sentence allows the reader and the examiner to know exactly what your essay is going to be about. Now I have to go ahead and show them that I actually know something about manipulation. And this is where I say that manipulation is when an individual or group gain control over someone using a clever or unscrupulous someone using a clever and scrupulous um, plan. Now, I've got to actually show some evidence in the text where, where this actually occurs, where uh, somebody is trying to gain control over somebody else by using a clever and scrupulous plan. So I could say, uh, in the text, Uncle Matt uses the emotions of the grieving characters to manipulate them to follow his actions. Now I need to find some evidence, so I go back into our short story guide. Uh, one of the places I could look is there are a section called quotations, or I could go back directly into the text. If I start here with quotations, I look for the highlighted areas, and I can talk about, here we go. So I could say, Uncle Matt uses the emotions of the three characters to make them in the following actions. And the following quote, Father Ned that uh, gives him to Uncle Matt's manipulation. 
what he thinks. You know, why do we live in a world but to love what is ours? And when that is cruel, we can watch what we love. It is time to band together and stand up to which certain that we love. So no one else has to experience this outrage again. Now I could say that this emotional uh, response is not the response of a rational individual. And this shows how a woman has manipulated it into action. Now that we've gone ahead and shown that and proved that, we need to actually present um, perhaps the author's purpose or perhaps our own understanding of why the key idea of manipulation is so vital. So again, this is where I can go back now into the guide and have a little bit of a look at some of the themes or do go back to the research I did. So I go back to the themes, persuasion. Okay, we've got the idea of changing people's attitudes or behavior. I can also go down and read some of the additional readings. Again, we have that quote in this reading right here. So here's, here's a thought. I could talk about the fact that, you know, the idea of manipulation um, is easy uh, to inflict on somebody when they've gone through an emotional state or when there's been a lot going on. As I scan through the rest of the articles, I can take a look for things that I think I'm going to be able to use. Here's another one I think that often reduces the story about human beings are almost always about power and desire and love. And at times when these seem to be a mess of stories about people, we feel like the story is about politics. So I've got two things that I can kind of work in there. So if I go back to that paragraph now and say George Saunders is, is important for people. from blindly following others and their agendas. So, in an interview with Adam Smith, Saunders is quoted saying, that's why I go back in, and I kind of paste this, I often reduce it reduces that starts by human beings are almost about power, and times, these things are being messed with stories about people, don't feel like stories about politics. support this a little bit. I can't just leave it dangling over there, so I need to say uh, this quote uh, proves that power is the motivating factor behind manipulation. people play 
they will use our emotions against us. So it took about five minutes of going back and forth between the, the guide and going back to the structure, but I've now got my first body paragraph that looks at the key idea in the text. My next two will be about the symbols that I've identified in the introduction before I do the conclusion. Now before I start my next body paragraph, which is going to look at the symbol, I might go back into my short story guide and, and just look again at the suggested structure of what that paragraph might look like. So it's slightly different. But it needs to start again by introducing um, what it is I'm actually going to analyze and then break it down and link it back to the idea before I can look an example from the text. So if I come back in, it starts off simply by saying uh, one, of the key, one of the main symbols used to show the idea of manipulation in the text. And I go on to explain it a little further. Uh, the repo is an article um, of clothing slash accessory. And that was removed from everyone's body following uh, the rabbit dog attack. Bow is significant because it can symbolize youth and innocence, which we associate with young children who wear these bows. It's also significant because of the color red. Now the color red can symbolize both love and anger, and these are the contrasting. Emotions, the characters are feeling following the death. Now I've gone ahead and explained the symbol. Now I need to kind of link it back to the idea. The image of this bow plays on the emotion. of the reader and makes us the sad and outraged over her death. Um, as previously stated, So now what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've linked it back to the idea, showing a clear understanding of how they're linked, and then developing um, more connections between the ideas in my essay. Now to go further, what I need to do now is come up with an example from the text. So I need to think back to a particular point in the text, and the one that really stands out for me, and if I go back in and have a look, um, it's probably where Uncle Matt actually Color enhances the bow, which is right here. So Uncle Matt got an Mac made up these flyers calling for a village meeting and a talk about taking the red bow, not the real bow, which turns pinkish, which it enhanced. And then he superimposed her photo along with the thing that said five day outrage. So that's going to work really, really well. 
well. Let me go back in. Um, in the text. Oracle Bat. Uses the emotions of the community to stir up the power range and support for his movement to remove the animals and anyone who disagrees. I said, so I'll go back up the iMac and made up flyers calling the village meeting. And on the top of the photo, he had taken the red bow, not the real red bow, but Karen's pinkish red that he color enhanced the iMac. And so I'm going to say, this shows. There I go, I've got my, my second body paragraph, which is the first symbol already done. And again, it follows a very similar structure, uh, or structure of explaining it, linking it back to the idea, and providing an example from the text. One more body paragraph to go, and I'll almost finish my essay. So now I need to talk about the second symbol in my next paragraph. So another symbol that demonstrates the key idea of manipulation uh, is the rabbit dogs. Okay, so first and first I have to actually explain uh, what the rabbit dogs may symbolize. So the dogs um, symbolize a wild and primitive instinct. Not at all animals, including humans, have uh, capable of I say have uh, and demonstrate. Oh, a dog. Um, it's sometimes viewed as an animal's best friend when they have become rapid. The dogs have lost all control. Much like the individuals in this short story. These individuals like the dogs have lost control over their emotions. out and anyone who gets in their way. So they had uh, gone ahead and explained it, now we're going to link it back to manipulation. Once individuals lose control over their emotions, They become 
functions here. This is what Uncle Matt does by first instilling the emotions uh, within others. And that's um, creating a campaign to get rid of the dogs. In this passage, in the article, that, uh, just token, and the author writes, So I'll come back on his iPad. Oh, wait, that's not that's the previous one. Represented the private state, he's effectively capable of convincing the villagers have the same idea as him by using his propaganda. And now I go back to what I think the author thinks, and that is what George Saunders is trying to do. is remind us that there are individuals out there who will use our emotions to manipulate us and that we can become much like the rapid Okay, so we've finally reached our conclusion now. And we're just going to go back into the guide so we can have a quick look into it. It's pretty straightforward. We want to restate the answer to our question. We want to look, are there any links between the ideas that we put there? I mean, if we look at the rabbit dogs, if we look at the bow, if we look at Emily and the abuse manipulation, and then finally ending it with your perspectives, what are the wider implications here? So we'll start with the conclusion just by going right back to the top of our page and putting in our answer. Copy and paste that. Okay, now we're just going to ask ourselves how are they related. Well, I mean, the common common factor between the red bow and the red dogs. So the, the key kind of idea that's connected between all of these is, is emotion. I mean, manipulation is based on controlling one's emotion. So, when considering the symbols used by Saunders uh, in the story, uh, the key factor that connects everything is emotions. Uh, we all feel emotions, and while uh, it is natural and normal, these emotions can be used against us to fulfill someone else's objectives. And it is why an entire nation Turn on a group of individuals uh, an idea or its own government. Without a second thought. And now, finally, just the wider implications. Well, what does this mean? 
Um, again, if we do a little research back, we remember um, that this was written in 2009, so there was a lot going on. So I think I want to end it by, by going back into that history and saying, um, this story was written in 2009, after the global economic, economic collapse and individuals were scared and emotional about well, their, their, their future, like their homes, their futures. And how they would survive. As a result, a number of irrational decisions followed. One of which are questioned in the media. the recent election of Donald Trump, Brexit, and other radical movements emerging. Whether it is love, hate, or fear to drive people to make a decision. All of that. Uh, it is clear there is always someone behind it. So there you go, we have a draft essay in, in a little over 33 minutes. Um, now I understand that you know, it might appear incredibly easy for me to do that here, um, kind of without any distractions, but if you think about it, um, you've read the stories, you know them well, you've got the resources, you've got quotes, you've got them in front of you, and you've got a, a fairly straightforward structure to follow. Writing essays like anything else is just practice. The more often you can articulate your ideas and structure them, and the easier it will become to actually approach and write them. The key, though, of course, is the planning. This is where it all starts. If you can accomplish this part within the first five minutes of your exam, then you're going to set yourself up for a pretty good chance at making sure that you not only meet the criteria, but you meet your own expectations. Thanks very much. I'm sorry I'm not there today, uh, but we'll see you tomorrow morning for your practice exam in B15. If you have any questions, send me an email. Best of luck. See you tomorrow.